Okay, we're still talking about numerical calculation of derivatives, and this is using the calculator to take a numerical approach to get an approximation to a derivative. And here's another example. f of x is 4x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 7. And we want to find the slope of f at these points. Now I'll, I'll show you another thing you can do here. Let me clear this out. Instead of just going straight to say math 8 and typing in this function, I'm going to do this. I'm going to hit the y equals key up here. And I'm going to put in this function for y1. So let's type 4x cubed plus 2x squared two x squared minus 3x plus 7. Okay, so now the, the function is stored in y1. Okay, then I'll hit quit. So it's still in there, you can see it. And then when I do inderiv, I hit the hit the math key right here for inderiv, math, and again it's option 8. And you can just press the 8 key instead of scrolling down there. You can just type math and then click 8 in deriv. And now I'm going to type y1. And to get to y1, I hit the vars key right here. And I get this list up. And I look up at the top where it says vars and y vars. Go over to the right. Use your arrow key and go to the right. And then option 1 is function. You can just press option 1 there or hit enter. And function, you see my list of functions there, y1. So just press 1 again. And it types y1. So we've got our function stored in y1. It's just going to uh, substitute that whole function that we typed in right there. So I can say y1, comma, x, comma. And then my first value here is 0. So this says calculate the numerical derivative of the function in y1 when x is equal to 0. And so we punch enter and it gives me negative 2.9999996. So I'm going to call that negative 3. So I'll say f primed of 0 is equal to negative 3. Okay, now let's find f prime of 1.2. Just do the same thing. Math 8. Or actually, rather than typing this, because it's kind of cumbersome to go uh, over here to the vars key and then go over to y vars and then type 1 and one again. That's that's four keystrokes, which is kind of cumbersome. You can just hit second and and hit then hit um, enter, and it recalls the thing you last typed. And then we can just back up with the arrow key and change the y value. And that's a lot easier than retyping. So this will give us the numerical derivative of y1 when x is equal to 1.2. And there it is, about 19.080004. Let's just round that to 19.08. So I'll say f prime of 1.2 is 19.08. And then when x is negative 1, so this gets pretty fast now, just back up and type in negative 1, close parentheses, and I need to delete that extra parentheses. So punch the delete key here. You have to get your syntax correct or it'll give you an error. And it's 5. That's that's probably supposed to really be 5. Um, that point oh 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 four is probably just uh, an error due to the fact that it's a numerical approximation. So let's say f prime of negative 1 is equal to 5. Now x equals 50. So do the same thing. Second entry and back up here and type in 50. Look at that, 30,197. F prime of 50 is 30,197. Now is that reasonable? This number is huge compared to the other numbers that we were getting. Well, think about this. This is a cubic curve, and um, and I haven't graphed that, although we could we could graph it pretty fast. If we pull the calculator back up, and, um, and go to graph. Well, let's go to zoom and just set a standard zoom window. Zoom 6. And it graphs the function. And you see it has the little up, down, up, the characteristic shape of a cubic curve. And you know that this gets steeper and steeper and steeper. So our curve just looked something like this. Well, let me try that again. Something like this. And this is getting really steep. So you can see that by the time we go all the way out here to x equals 50, this thing's going to be really high and really steep. So it does make sense that it has a really huge slope when x equals 50. And then one more, x equals 0 
So let's do the numerical derivative and just type in 0.36. So the numerical derivative of the function in y1 when x equals 0.36 it gives me negative 0 0.004796. So that's approximately 0. I'm going to say f prime of 0 0.36 is approximately 0. And if you pull up the graph, you see the shape of the curve there. That little dip down, that hits bottom right about there. So our, our curve looks something like this. This little dip down right here is at, at real, real close to x equals 0.36 right there. I chose that number deliberately. That's real close to the bottom where the slope of the graph would be 0. Okay, but all of that was basically just to show you some examples of calculating a numerical derivative and done so by putting this function into the y1 function of the calculator. And you could have put it into y2 or y3 as well. Or any of the other y variables or y functions. Now I'll show you where the numerical derivatives can really be useful. What if you have something like this? f of x equals e to the power of 4 sine x and you're told to find the slope at x equals 3. And suppose you don't know how to differentiate this function. Now this is a function that's actually not too hard to differentiate and we will, um, we will learn later in the course how to differentiate trig functions and exponential functions and combinations of functions like this but if you don't know how uh, you can still find the derivative at a point with the end derivative function so and and this isn't too hard to type into the calculator so let's pull the calculator back up we'll clear all this out and we'll say math 8 okay numerical derivative of this function so we type e to the power of and then 4 sine x then we need to close parentheses on the sine function and then another close parentheses to that e to the power of. So that's our function. Then we have the comma and our x and comma 3. And then close parentheses on the end derivative. The syntax is particular. You need to get all of those parentheses in the right place. So the numerical derivative of e to the power of 4 sine x when x is equal to 3. And we punch enter. And there we have it. Approximately equal to negative 6.96. So I can write f prime of 3 is approximately equal to negative 6.96. And even if I don't know how to differentiate this, I can still find the derivative at a particular point by using n deriv. Here's another example, one that you might not know how to, how to differentiate. f of x is equal to the secant of the natural log of x. Again, we will learn later how to find the derivatives of trig functions and logarithmic functions and combinations of functions like this. But if you don't know how to do it, you can still do it on the calculator. So suppose you were told to find the slope at x equals 2. Okay, let's pull the calculator back up and type in this function. So we do math 8 in deriv and secant, remember, secant is 1 over cosine. There's not a secant key, but we can do 1 divided by cosine of the natural log of x. Then we need a close parentheses for the natural log function, a close parentheses for the secant function, or, or the cosine in this case rather, and then comma x comma 2, and then close parentheses on our end derivative. And we hit enter and it calculates it. I'll say about 0.54. So we can say f prime of 2 is approximately equal to 0 0.54. So once again, even if you have a function that you don't know how to differentiate, you can still find the derivative at a point at least using the end derivative function on the calculator can be particularly handy on an AP exam, for example, on a, if you're on a section of the exam where you're allowed to use the calculator, then you can find a derivative numerically. And that might be a lot faster than working it out. Even if you know how to work it out, it might just be faster to type it in. 
and speed matters on the AP exam too because you're under a lot of time pressure to get those questions answered uh, before the exam ends obviously.